Foods. Today we have special guest Christopher, one of my best friends. Movie buff. M movie buff, citizen of the world. He appreciates movies. He knows movies. He likes movies. He loves movies. And we just watched Top Gun Maverick together. What are your thoughts about Top just Gun? Just an incredible movie. An incredible movie. What do you want to know about it? What do you want to know? What do I want to know about it? <laughs> I guess uh, my review, in a nutshell, was um, I think the, like, the visual effects in terms of the, um, the planes going upside down and seeing all like the terrain go across the planes and everything like that was uh, was pretty realistic, um, and I mean it was a pretty action-packed movie. Uh, but I don't know if I loved it more than the first Top Gun. There are two different movies in my mind. Like, I think the first Top Gun has a lot of sentimental value for some reason. And the second Top Gun is much more of like a, uh, like technically interesting uh, kind of movie in terms of all the visual stuff that makes it look cool. Well, that's stuff that like you can't even really, it's hard to compare. Yeah. It's 36 true. years later, yeah. technology has advanced yeah. a ton. Uh, you know, the visual effects are like a thousand times, a million times better than what they were back in the day, only because they could only do so much back then. Right. But as you said, like that sentimental value mm -hmm. from the first one, like that impact, that emotional impact that the yeah. first one had, yeah. which that's on in the background, by the way, right now. Um, you know, it, that's a serious thing. I mean, there's a reason why these movies, 36 years later, mm -hmm. they still have that impact watch it again right. like, oh my gosh it brings back memories it brings back it and I thought one of the most interesting things about the new movie was that they really tried to catch on to the emotional pull that they had with uh, Goose's son to try to kind of tie the movie together I mean I thought they did a pretty good job of like kind of cleverly trying to tie the movies together and I thought that was like the main way in which they tried to do so was by having Goose's son in the new movie uh, to tie back to the old movie and it was a good thing. It was like initially it was that they were fighting their butting heads, mm -hmm. right? I, it, it's tough to even say that there's spoilers because as a Top Gun movie, you can kind of predict what's going to happen. You know, like, <laughs> you like, well, I guess there's, there, there were some twists and turns in it that we won't have to spoil till later. We can wait till later to spoil. But, but you do know that Rooster is Goose's son. And it's like <laughs> rooster and then goose. It's like <laughs> gooster, right? So like by my, like he was a highlight of the movie. He was definitely played it well. Yeah. He looked the part. He had that kind of chip on the shoulder of his dad. And I've personally met him before, so I have a the goose, the rooster, the goose yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Miles Teller, the huh. actor huh. at the Golden Globes. It's okay, you know. We'll talk. Well, you know, well. Put a link in yeah, there. Yeah, put a link in there. Singing if you go to Singing in the Gold Globes too, Tremaine Hayho, you'll find it. So me finding Miles Teller anyway. Because no one knew him at the time. He's like, he's like, do you, do you even know him? I'm like, dude, you're Miles Teller. And he's like, <laughs> wow, this guy. You know. Anyway, so but that was way back in the day. But he was really good. Like he's really there's that emotional thing. Mm -hmm. when they say that Top Gun is a drama. Hmm. It's a drama. It's more than a, an action film. More than an action Interesting. film. Interesting. Right. Yeah. They say like, oh, yeah. it's a drama more than anything. They're, they're always harping on the dra dramatic impact of the movie. Huh. So like, I mean, I personally had a really good time watching it. It's a movie well, you have to see in the theaters. Is it a perfect film? I don't think so. No. I mean, I didn't, like, there were times where I was like, why? What? what? But you just kind of roll the punches, and then especially the last quarter of the movie, it was just like, it just flies. It's just like, whoa. Because like, it, it felt like there was a part where three quarters in, where it could have ended. And it was like, oh, it was about to end. Like, okay, it's a good movie. It was good. Like, it was just cool. Yeah, a little and, bit. And then it's like, oh no, there's a whole <laughs> other mission. It's like, oh my god, the, like, this is happening. And, like, <laughs> and it was just like, it, I feel like everyone was just like, like just stop and was just into it. Like, yeah, without giving too much of a uh, too much of it away, they they put a lot of energy into like a kind of a sequence in the in the movie where 
uh, the planes were going to do some like kind of complicated mechanics, like of going up and down different kind of terrain and stuff like that. And they practiced it a bunch, and then they kind of eventually performed it like on a real target kind of thing. Um, and that became kind of like the gist of like the last half of the movie. I felt like was around like the that part of the whole story, versus this or the the first movie was was more based on. Um, like the enemy, you know, like trying to attack the enemy, versus the second. The second movie was more based around like how cool the planes could fly. If that makes sense. Oh right, yeah. So so yeah. The second one. The thing is, for me, is when you look at the first one, you're like, well, what is this whole movie is about? Training exercises and okay, cool. There's no real weight. To, there's no real bad guy, there's uh-huh. no real you know, threat but then at the very end at the first one, the threat becomes real and becomes a real thing and he saves the day of the bat. so like the second one was very similar where it was like okay, yeah. right, the threat becomes real this is why we train this is, this is what we brought Maverick on for and what I liked about Maverick is that he is a type that's not, he's, he's like always done his own thing He's always grown. That's the definition of the word. Yeah, literally. Basically, he's always yeah. done his own thing. And, and he's not like within the system and he's not going through the steps. He's not, he hasn't graduated really per se. So he's like yeah. this ungraduated guy who's just still doing his own thing. And by definition, kind of, a lot of people look down on him because he's not an, you know, an admiral. He's not a colonel. I don't know how the yeah. rules work, but he's not like gone up. He's still a captain, right? So he's still. I think that's the rank. You correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below, but he, he, uh, he never really grew out of his position. He was always doing his own thing and mm-hmm. not seeking yeah. the next. And thing. that's why he didn't grow. Yeah. Right. But he did in a lot of ways because he was the best pilot ever. Mm-hmm. So the best pilot ever isn't really going to be the coach. He's not really going to be the general manager. He's going to be, you know, like LeBron James or Michael Jordan or something. Uh-huh. He's going to be freaking Michael, Michael Jordan. He's going to play the game yeah. the best he can. And he's going to go against the rules. He's going to go. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's kind of the persona of, of what he was, what, the, what they were trying to convey. Like he took the too much away but he took like the rule book or whatever in terms of like here's how you're supposed to fly the plane and like threw it in the trash and it's like okay you guys need to really do it this way it's like, it's like the whole rebel mentality in terms of like you shouldn't do what the book tells you you gotta you know do it the way to get stuff done and well that's the thing i guess we can just assume that everyone's seen it because a lot of people have seen this movie so we can just speak freely i don't want to limit your yeah your but but again though like if you're going into a top gun movie thinking there's going to be some crazy twists and turns, you know. I mean, like, you're probably mistaken because it might be what it what you're expecting. You know, Maverick's the hero. Um, other people are the villains. And Maverick saves the day. You know, spoiler alert. But, but the thing is, it's a spectacle to watch. That's the whole point. Like, it is a complete and utter spectacle to yeah. watch. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I've never seen another movie that, like, where you're – watching you know plane fly through the desert and do all these crazy turns and stuff and tom cruise does this little bit when the movie first starts i don't know this will be part of like the the real official like release that you could buy on dvd or netflix or whatever but i mean he he comes out i've never seen this before he, he basically came out and was like gave this little prelude to the whole movie about like hey this was shot in real f-15s glad you guys are here this little like introduction <laughs> bit I was like, Which I need to do in every single movie. Kind of, I've never seen that, but it was kind of cool. It's, it's a single intro. the context. Um, yeah, like M. Night Shyamalan has done that. Oh, before. really? Yeah, and he's like, oh, welcome back to theaters. I'm M. Night Shyamalan. Like, you know, <laughs> that's what I need to do with every single film that I make. I need to have an intro for myself. And I'm like, hey, welcome back to the <laughs> Welcome theaters. to Cat Town. Welcome to Cat Town. Welcome These to- cats are all real. No one was <laughs> Welcome to Heyo Studios. My name's Tremaine Heyo. I'm kind of the greatest or whatever, but... <laughs> Enjoy your time watching my movie in the, that I'm the star in. It's like, it's like no, but, but it was a thing. For, yeah, but, but, but Tom Cruise's point was like, oh, this is all, this, there were zero green screens. It was all real, you know, footage. And 
yeah, I mean, it was almost more in some ways, like, I guess the closest thing I compare it to would be like a National Geographic type of like, a, here's the real fire fighter pilots, like in their daily life here. It, it was like, it's really dumb. You can see all the crazy landscape, you know, going to pass their ears and stuff like that. And that's what kind of made it, I think, unique. Dude, and that's stuff that you can't fake. I mean, yeah. you, when you look at it, even in the human eye, like, right. you know, you know, yeah. in the yeah. eye, like you can't. Software's not there, like that complexity. It's just not there. Yeah. It's like when you look at a, something that's green screen, you look at something that's computer animated, your your mind, even if you're not, you don't have to be the biggest film buff in the world. Your eye tra is trained to look at it in a certain way, and you cannot fake that. What they did, you cannot fake. What they, The way they quote-unquote faked it was that they would have real pilots pilot the plane, and they would have the actors behind them. So they would have the real, um, they would have the real camera oh. on the actors, and the actors would act like they're flying the plane. Tom Cruise, I think, was the only actor that was actually flying the plane, but everyone else was not. But but they had a real pilot flying them. Uh, okay. So that's why it's like they're acting. It's like best of all the world. It's like you're acting, like because they're acting, they're memorizing their lines, they're saying their how lines, mm -hmm. they're rehearsing, which a pilot can't do. I'm sorry. They can't do it because they're not actors, but what a pilot can do is pilot a plane. So mm -hmm. they had the pilots pilot the plane and they had the actors in the bubble behind them. Beautiful. Then also they talked about like having the camera set up where they would just like hit record. They would hit record because there was no one else there. You know, there's not like a cameraman there. It's like right. the camera's set, the sound is set. They just hit record and like, okay, we're going to... We're gonna go for a take. We're gonna go up in the air. I'm gonna say my lines. That's it. That's what they did. So that's what's so interesting about this movie is that they took it for real. They did it for mm. real. You can't have a cast crew in the cockpit of a plane. It's like you can have a like, you <laughs> yeah. Know I mean? you can't have a director, photography, a director, right. and not a mo monitor, makeup, uh, like you know, doing make. Yeah. Unless you're doing a Marvel movie, which is all green screen. But, but you're saying Tom Cruise was actually flying planes. Some yeah. Planes. Yeah. So really? he's, a, he's Tom Cruise is a pilot in and of himself. He is a he wow. flies the plane. And huh. he's, so I'm not sure like how much of what the crazy maneuvers. Yeah, might probably go, not. You know, I don't know. Like, yeah, I don't know how much of that hmm. was movie magic or not. But I know that he is a like he can fly those planes because there's like commercial jet pilots and there's like people that can fly F-18s or F-14 or whatever it is. Well, I don't know the name of it. But like there's people that can fly those types of planes, and there's people that can fly a commercial jet, and there's people that can fly a plane, a little podunk, a little podunk thing, thing. Uh, which, yeah, yeah. which those I, I'm scared more about. Those yeah, no, there is way, way riskier. Those, sure. yeah, it seems yeah. way riskier yeah, than, it is. than anything. So, but I mean, like the camera angles, the shots, the you can't fake that, and, and mm -hmm. seeing that. Okay, so storyline wise. So in the first one, there's a love interest to Tom Cruise. In the second one, there's a love interest to Tom Cruise. How do you compare and contrast them both? Uh, I mean, I like the love interest in the first movie better. Um, seemed a little bit more authentic. Part of it is, honestly, just the chick was younger. And guys like younger chicks. What can we say? It's true. Just be real. Would you say she's hotter than Connelly? Oh, Connelly's probably. pretty hot. Conley's pretty odd. If Conley was the same age as the chick in the current movie, they'd be equal, honestly. Okay. But they had to find somebody, honestly, that's like Tom Cruise's age, right? They can't throw a 25-year-old when Tom Cruise is like 50 and make it seem believable. <laughs> you're, you're a weirdo. Well, so. it, would, it would be believable if it's Tom Cruise, but, but, <laughs> but like, in, as character-wise, yeah. yeah, no. It no, I, mean, I think she's a good pick. Well, that was my, going back to my biggest flaw of the whole movie is that she seemed out of the nowhere and he's like oh yeah you're at the bar and I'm look at me I'm at the bar and she's like yeah things happened a couple years ago but we had our fling and she's like yeah Penny Penny bartender I'm like the top pilot in the world but you're still a bartender and you have a child let's hang out I don't know it just it seemed out of place it didn't seem like it was yeah, so it was natural. It didn't seem like it was. I agree. That's a good point. It isn't quite as natural as like the first movie. Yeah, the first yeah. movie seemed completely natural. Yeah, it seemed like Maverick movie. was being his self, singing in the bar, being kind of mm -hmm. obnoxious. But she dug it because she liked that song. She liked that love and feeling or whatever. Mm -hmm. 
and then it naturally regressed from there. But from that, from this, it's like he came back to a bar, and she recognized him, and then there was like chemistry that was already there. That but you don't know what her story is. Like okay, so she's a bartender, but she has a child who's like fifteen or thirteen. Mm-hmm. So, and then they, they like, it felt forced. That's the part that felt really yeah. forced. Yeah. Yeah, definitely not as, as natural as the first one, for sure. So, that would be like a gripe, I mean, that would be like a gripey type thing, but like, that is a note that I would say is something that it didn't feel as natural. Like, if. She is uh, another thing though. They didn't acknowledge what we're talking about. Okay, let me back right here. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on right, right now. And the first I mean, time, the goose is dying. Oh yeah, the goose died. Sorry, yeah, the yeah, goose. Perfect. Sorry guys, if you guys haven't seen Top Gun one. You've had thirty six years, so I'm sorry. I don't feel too bad at uh, R.I.P. Goose. But so so um the the girl from the first one. They don't even acknowledge her existence. They don't even say as much in the second one. So did, what, girl? did they? The, the, the love wife. interest? No, no. The love interest. Goose's wife is is Meg Ryan. So right. by the way, there's no Meg Ryan in the movie. So they could have had Meg Ryan in the movie as the mom, as Rooster's mom. That would have added more gravitas to the film. And also another thing. So they didn't have. So Connolly and what were you gonna say? You were gonna say something. No, I wasn't. Okay, so, um, so this girl, they didn't even acknowledge the fact that they lost their relationship. They didn't say what happened. So, there, so Tom Cruise and this girl in the first one had this complete love, puppy love relationship. Everything's hunky dory. It's all great. In the second one, they don't even acknowledge that. Yes, I think that's what threw me off too. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah, at least say like, hey, we tried it and it didn't work. She was a commander. She died. She got leukemia. She got Lou Gehrig's disease. It doesn't <laughs> work. Alzheimer's. She can't. Right. She, by this time, they're probably yeah, 70 years she old. She got AIDS. Whatever. It doesn't matter. But like, you know, things at least like explain her death, the reason why she's not in the movie. Because think about it. What is this actress doing other than being in Top Gun 2, the biggest movie? Right? Nothing. Nothing. There's no a reason why that woman actress should not be in the movie to follow up. She changed her look. She, she, Tom Cruise looks a lot better than she does. She could have become a man. I mean, you don't yeah, want to discriminate. That's true. I mean, Hollywood's a different right. animal these days. That's true. But at, least, but at least say and acknowledge that. Like, hey, if she became a man, like, hey, sorry. How would they say it and acknowledge sorry, that? Honey, you know, <laughs> sorry, honey. <laughs> uh, my last movie. girl, my last wife became a man, so I'm glad you're still a bartender and not a man, so. But that was another thing. It was like, it was like, so that's the thing. It's like, this is when you pick it apart. When you pick the movie apart. Like, all right, let's think about this for a second. So like, his, so his love interest is a bartender. It's like, he's the top freaking pilot of Top Gun. Super handsome guy. He's Tom freaking Cruise. And he chooses a bartender from the podunk years. What were we going to say? No, I was just going <laughs> Using <laughs> my yawning for speaking. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was that was my biggest thing. Where, but but like as soon as that all ended, it was like the movie picked up and it was like okay, action, flying, all this stuff. After that, but what's really hard with a movie that's like this iconic is honestly trying to, like what we're doing right now. We're, we're trying to compare the past to the current movie. And like what we, and then you're mixing in like all our expectations about what this movie should be like, and it's a really difficult bar to set because you have such a high bar to go back to. You know what I mean? It's a weird dynamic. Like there's not too many movies that have a like a new a re like a not a remake but a sequel thirty five years later. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? It's a weird yeah. kind of comparison that we're trying to make. That is true, and and that is like well, I guess a, a, a lot of the things like they rehashed a lot of the things that worked in the first one. Yeah, they didn't try to reinvent the wheel. They the, the, mm-hmm. the, like with the intro, they started this program and then blah blah blah. They call it top. Yeah, five, yeah, right? kind of like Star Wars ish. Yeah, like Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars, Star Wars, okay. Star Wars and right. New Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. So, right. so that's cool. It's kind of like a nod to the yeah. past, yeah. the future, and like the 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 
the intro was okay, flights, airplanes, the background. Yep. So it's more credit to Tony Scott, R.I.P. Tony Scott, who was a visionary, was a filmmaker, was someone that paved the way for for Tug and Two. You know, and and John or just sorry, Joe, is it Joe Krasinski? Joe Krasinski, who's the director of the Top Gun Maverick, he directed Tron, he directed mm -hmm. Oblivion. So, uh -huh. some movies that are actually pretty underrated, like Tron, I love Tron. Like, Tron's an incredible film. And he was started out as a production designer, so he is more of like the aesthetics, the shots, the feel of the film. My question to be would be where versus Tron, which is a very production design heavy film where every set has a specific look to it. Every feel, you know, everything has a specific design to it. But to Top Gun, he's in a cockpit flying a plane. You know, you can't design the set for mm -hmm. the background of the freaking mountains behind him. Mm -hmm. So my question would be like, what would be his challenge of what he's doing in this latest Top Gun versus what he's used to doing, which is production design, which is designing the set, designing huh. what it all looks like, and, and and that's something where you can actually pinpoint and and make stuff that's really cool, and that's all your that's all his job is to do. But there's so many variables when you're in the air, when you have cameras in the air, when you when you have pilots in the air, when you have actors flying and everything. Like there's so much that's different than something that is completely designed have, uh, having a controlled set a controlled it's really hire a guy like that to do a movie like this you got it, yeah completely but yeah. but he did Ob Oblivion really well uh, okay it's about three yeah, that's a, Tom, yeah there's a lot of elements there yeah. so he's a very huh. super talented director and like he's someone that is not that much older than you or I huh. and but I'm still younger than him and I still make better <laughs> movies it's okay Jim it's okay Jim <laughs> and he's two years older than me yeah, yeah, it's okay, Joe. I'm one and a half years old. Oh, okay. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> no, but, but, uh, <laughs> no, but seriously, though, like, <laughs> I'm 34, you asshole, or what did you say? Well, I was Joe, it was like, no, I know, I know. He's like, yeah, you're 36. I'm like, I'm not 36, you asshole, I'm 35. I'm 35. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, how dare you make that huge <laughs> blunder of a mistake? But like, but but still though, you know, it's like you look at these directors and actors and producers. <laughs> His truly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so okay, so what would you say? Top Gun Two, Top Gun Maverick. What would you say is? We could say favorite part, least favorite part, and how you would rate it. Uh, when you say favorite part, you mean like a theme or like a certain scene? Yeah, a certain scene, or it could be a, a it could be a one-liner, it could be a Everything. whole scene, it could be the segment of a movie. Um, I think, actually, honestly, <laughs> probably what I liked about it the most was the San Diego nostalgia factor, because I lived there. Um, if I had to pick one thing, that's basically different scenes from San Diego, right? Just that it was filmed in San Diego again. The uh, thing that I liked least about it um, was maybe kind of like, the, yeah, the forced feel of the, the love interest with the chick. I mean, it was there, but it did feel forced, especially compared to like seeing the old one that we're watching in the background. Uh, what was the last thing? And then how would you rate it overall? Uh, like on a scale of like one, one to ten. ten? Uh, like a seven, probably. Wow, seven out of ten. Yeah. Okay, all right. Seven out of ten. Yeah. Damn. That's, <laughs> that's all right. Is that lower or higher than what you thought? To me, it's, it's kind of low, uh -huh. but like, I see what you're saying with uh -huh. it. You know, if you look at it face value, it's uh -huh. probably a seven out of ten. Depends what you like in movies, too, though. I mean, you know. To me, it's like, I guess I'm a bit more forgiving because, uh -huh. like, if I was, if I was taking it at 
face value, it would be a 7 out of 10 movie. Mm-hmm. But, like, dude, I mean, I, I just know. Being a filmmaker or myself and knowing how hard it is yeah. to it is to make a movie, I mean, it's a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah. It's a 9.5 out of 10. I mean, like, it, anything that's lower than that, like, I'm nitpicking. I'm nitpicking. You know, I'm mm-hmm. nitpicking. Um, there were some actors, like, there was uh, the one actor that was kind of big, had a mustache and glasses. And he was, like, an okay actor. You know, it's like he could have been a lot better. Um, there were a lot of performances that I wish that I was there to make the performance a lot yeah. better. Because... I feel like John Hamm looks the part. He looks the part, but Who's actually, John, Hamm? John Hamm is the handsome like colonel guy that was like above. Uh, is he the guy from the uh, Mad Men? Mad Men. Okay, yeah, yeah. I like those guys. Yeah. yeah, he's good. But yeah. the thing is, is like I wish he had a little bit more. I wish he pushed it a little bit more. I wish. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? Like yeah, it seemed like a lot of things where he just said a line and it was like, okay, the line worked. He's a handsome man. He has a charisma, but there's something that's missing where he could add a little bit more to make it a lot better. Uh-huh. So that was those were th- things where I was like, man, you have all the pieces, you have all the parts, but a lot of the deliveries could have been d- delivered a lot better. He could have gotten a little bit more pissed off. He could have been a lot more pissed <laughs> off. And the thing is, especially with the first one, we had Principal Strickland from. Back to the Future, the bald guy. Like, yeah, hey, you're a slacker. Exactly. No, no, totally. That's yeah. what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. like that guy has that yeah. gravitas. If that right. guy gets pissed at you, yeah, you're yeah. in trouble. Like your bones are shaking. Like this guy, Ham did not have the same effect at all. Like not even. It's close. not his. I mean, if you look at Madman, like that's kind of his. He's like the cool, calm, like like guy. Oh, okay. I haven't yeah. seen that. Oh, uh, yeah. That's his, he played Madman. Yeah, okay, so he did the same thing yeah. that he always did. So, like, that's another thing. It's like, you want to bring someone, if you want to bring Ham into the role, you want to bring him in for something else. Like, something that, that like, take what he already has and what he's good at, but give him something new to, to work with. Give him something to really play with and, and really, because he seemed to be a kind of a generic meter type person. It's like, okay, anyone could have played that role. It happened yeah. to be John Ham. A lot of women like the guy. He look, he's a handsome man, but like acting wise, eh, he was okay, you know. And I think he was one of the weaker points of the, mm-hmm. of the film. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> strengths were definitely Tom Cruise. Definitely Rooster was a big strength. Um, I thought, uh, what's his name at the end? Uh, uh, Hangman. Hangman was a big strength. Hangman was kind of like a Ice Man. It basically was the same character as Iceman, like a handsome, cocky, asshole, adversary type character. Mm-hmm. But he played it well, and, you know, he played it well. So, anyway, I mean, we could talk about it and then pick it up at time. You should definitely watch Tom Cr- Cruise and Val Kilmer and Miles Teller and John Hamm. And Tremaine Hay. And Tremaine Hay. And Chris Hay. And Chris Harrison. <laughs> Watch it a movie. Enjoy it. Have a good time. Um, closing thoughts. Uh, <laughs> I would not say anything. I have a weird thought in my head. What was it? Don't blow your load too early, boys. <laughs> yeah. Take that to the bank. <laughs> Alright, guys. So between a 9.5 out of 10 and a 7 out of 10... It's worth watching in the theaters. Oh yeah, no, it's a good, it's a good movie. Yeah, good movie, worth watching in the theaters. Go check it out. What'd you guys think about it? Leave that in the comments below. Like this movie, like this video if you didn't like it, or if you didn't like it. I'm just gonna okay. All right, bye. See you tomorrow. Bye.